Well, I, I thank the, uh, <clears throat> the gentleman for this, uh, this hour, this special order on an important subject, the Export-Import Bank. Um, and I was just going to start with, this, with retelling a story I told at a, an event not too long ago <clears throat> that I think um, is important. And the, the scenario that's going to play out, um, I think, all across the country later this afternoon, there's going to there's be a guy who works second shift at the local manufacturing facility. He's going to go out in his truck to drive to work. And now remember, he's working second shift, which means <clears throat> he's got to miss some of his kids' Little League games, miss some of his children's after-school activities. And um, the uh, goes out to get in his truck to, to go to work, and he looks a couple houses down, and he sees a guy sitting on the front porch, drinking a cup of coffee, reading the newspaper. He knows the guy can work but won't work and is getting his tax dollars. Gets in his truck to drive to work, <clears throat> and he happens to turn the radio on. It happens to be the news hour. Reporter comes on and talks about the federal government's got an $18 trillion national debt. They got this program that gives money to favored and connected corporations. One of these companies went bankrupt and cost the taxpayers a ton of money. And he hears all that, and he remembers what he saw on the front porch of his neighbor's house. And guess what? This guy's ticked off, and he has every right to be. Same time he's driving to work, there's a lady driving home from work. She teaches second grade at the local elementary school, and she's busted her tail all day long helping her students. She views her job as a teacher as a mission field, trying to help her students get the skill set they need to start on their path to achieving the American dream. She's worked hard all day long. She's driving home, happens to have her radio on, happens to be tuned into the same station where the same reporter comes on and talks about the federal government with an $18 trillion national debt, this program that gives money to favored corporations, connected corporations. This one company went bankrupt, cost the taxpayers millions of dollars. She hears all that as she pulls into her driveway on the same street, sees the same guy sitting on his front porch, drinking coffee, reading the paper. She knows he can work but won't work, and he's getting her tax dollars. And guess what? She's just as mad as a second shift worker, and she has every right to be. Now, our job as members of Congress is to remember people like the second grade teacher and the second shift worker and fight for things they care about. And here's one. They care about this concept that goes on in this town where connected companies get special deals with their tax money, and they want that to stop. And we now have a chance to do that, to start the process of stopping the corporate welfare. And that's what Mr. Buck's special order hour is all about, stopping the Export-Import Bank from continuing the corporate connectedness, the corporate cronyism, and the corporate welfare. Our job is real simple. All we have to do is nothing, something Congress is usually pretty good at doing. All we have to do is not reauthorize this, this bank, which loans out billions of taxpayer dollars, puts billions of taxpayer dollars at risk, and helps connected corporate entities who got every lobbyist in this town hired to fight for their cause at the expense of second grade teachers and second shift workers. So let's not reauthorize this thing. Let's show those people we're actually fighting for them. Then once we do that, then we can actually also get into the social safety net, reform that, require work for able-bodied adults, treat taxpayers with respect, help people trapped in our social safety net system get to a better life. We can reform it all. But let's start, let's start with those connected companies with the high-paid lobbyists getting the special deals. One other thing I'll add before turning it back over to the gentleman from Colorado who's doing such a great job on this issue, and my good friend from Virginia who's going to speak as well on this issue and doing a great job. This thing is not only bad because it loans out money, puts taxpayer monies at risk, it's corrupt. Just last week, Mr. Gutierrez, a long-term employee at the XM Bank, was indicted on bribery and fraud charges. Bribery and fraud charges that go clear back to 2006. For seven years, he was scamming people, taking taxpayer money, helping him sell bribes from companies benefiting from the Export-Import Bank. And last week, at the first hearing we've had on this issue, this Congress, we had the Inspector General at the Export-Import Bank say this, and I'll close here. He said, there may be more indictments in the Gutierrez case, and more importantly, he said, there may be indictments in the 31 
That's right, 31 open fraud investigations that the XM Bank and the Department of Justice are currently investigating. Now, if that's not enough reason to get rid of this thing, I don't know what is. Puts taxpayer money at risk, corruption, fraud, 31 open fraud investigation cases. Everyone knows it's bad, and all Congress has to do to end it is not a darn thing. For goodness sake, maybe even Congress can accomplish that. And with that, I yield back to the gentleman from Colorado.